Okay. Well, let us have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you tonight for your blessings, and we just ask uh, that you would bless this Holy Week devotion. We honor you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise that is due to you. Bless every speaker and presenter that we will have this week. Oh God, we glorify your great name and we honor what you have done on our behalf. And it is effective even right now, Lord. Many of us um, who were once lost, oh God, many of us who were living in sin, oh God, you, your blood sacrifice paid the penalty for our sins and right now Lord we just want to say thank you we want to appreciate everything every bruise every nail every chain and whip oh God that you endured even the pains of death oh God we cannot repay you uh, we can't honor you and glorify you enough for what you have done you being the living God who created all things, humbled yourself in order that we might have life. And, oh God, what a precious gift. And we honor you this week, oh God, by saying we love you, we adore you, Lord, and we will appreciate what you've done more than what we have. Lord God, right now, oh yes, may your name be magnified throughout all the heavens and the earth for your name is glorified therein and lord jesus christ we just say thank you ask your spirit to move right now even in this facebook live setting oh god somebody needs a touch from you somebody needs a gentle reminder of the love that you have shown us through your actions um, on this week which we commemorate oh god yes right now we thank you, we honor you, we glorify you once again. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. May the Lord's name be blessed forevermore. Okay, my job tonight is twofold. Um, first, it is to explain the format that we will use this week and then kick off the initial lesson. So, how we'll do it is every night at 7 p.m., uh, approximately 7 p.m., um, we will have a 30-minute devotional, and it will be presented by one of the staff at the Bible Institute. I will lead the first couple devotions. Um, my name is Steve Dokes, and I am the dean of the Bible Institute as well as one of the associate pastors at Refuge Temple Church. I will carry the first two nights, and then we also have a gentleman, um, Elder Jerry Perry Jr. Um, he's also a part of the Bible Institute and an ordained elder at Refuge Temple Church in Burlington. We will have him on Thursday evening. And on Friday evening, we will have Elder Chris White out of Bensalem, Pennsylvania. Um, he will um, give us our concluding devotion. So we look forward to what the Lord is going to do. Um, this is just a small token of, of appreciation and something to share with um, the Bible Institute supporters and students. Okay, all that being said, um, let's get started in the lesson in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please bear with me as uh, we get set up real quick. Um, for the scripture, um, we will cover the timeline found in Mark chapter number 11. And by the way, our devotion will cover chapter 11 through 15, starting out from when Jesus Christ um, commanded the two disciples to go get the colt up to the point where Jesus is crucified and 
he dies. Um, so we'll have a chapter each night. Of course, this being the opening night, we will cover verse 11, or chapter 11, rather. So bear with me a moment as we get set up, and we shall go from there. Amen. If you know somebody out there, please share, and uh, we'll greatly appreciate it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. We thank him. We thank him. We thank him. Okay, Mark chapter number 11. Um, we're going to deal with the sequence of events found there. So, um, this is how we'll do it. Um, I will give a brief summary of the events and then go into the scriptures that pertain to them and give some thoughts concerning those. So this will be more of a Bible teaching tonight than an inspiration, but we indeed do want you to be inspired by the words recorded in Scripture. So, um, verse number 1 through 6 deals with um, the disciples. Um, they are given a commandment by Jesus to go into the city and get a cult. Um, so we will read that record first. All right, verse number one. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat, loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door, without in a place where two ways met. Let me explain verse 4 for a minute. What the writer is explaining to us is that this was an intersection where um, they found the place where the coat would be tied. Yeah, let me repeat for and when they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without in a place where two ways met they loosed him as Jesus commanded. Verse number five and certain of them stood there said unto them what do ye loosing the colt I can imagine without any information that the onlookers may have suspected that the disciples were stealing the colt um, so they asked the legitimate question here um, why are you loosing the colt and verse number five, and certain of them that stood there said unto them once again, What do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. Talk about a name drop. All they told the onlookers, who may have been the owners of this colt, or somebody who was given custody of the colt, all they had to say is that Jesus sent us and they let them take this colt. There's power in that name Jesus and the name of Jesus. We don't have time to go into that. I know I want to, uh, but the name of Jesus um, legitimizes a lot of things. Amen. Um, so it was preordained through the scriptures um, that this event would take place in which Jesus would ride into Jerusalem on a coat. In the Old Testament, it just dealt with the Messiah, I'm not necessarily given the name Jesus. All right, so that is verse number one through six. Um, the disciples go out and do as Jesus tells them to do, and they, they come back with a coat. All right, so the famous verses in 7 through 10 deal with the crowd following Jesus Christ. So let, let's go there for a moment. 
and read. It says, And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. Now this is referring to the colt. They put garments on the colt, and he sat upon them. It's not clearly identified here why they did this, why they put their garments on the coat. Um, but I'm assuming that it is um, they were trying to make uh, the writer comfortable um, by putting this on him and he sat upon them. And many went in the way and others cut down branches off the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So it's evident here that the people recognize the fact that um, Jesus Christ um, was indeed the descendant of David that they have been looking for for centuries now. Hallelujah, glory to God. For centuries they had been looking for the Messiah um, to come and he finally was here and they were looking for the Messiah to take his place upon the throne of David in order that they might have liberty or be freed from the captivity of the Romans. At this time, Judah was under um, the rule of um, Rome. Um, they were under Caesar's domain and had a Roman governor, uh, Pontius Pilate, and they were looking for the promises of the Old Testament to come to fruition, which promised that there would be a restoration of the kingdom of David. This is known scripturally as the Davidic covenant. And they had been waiting from the time of the split of the kingdom way back in 900 BC or so up until this point and after many centuries he had arrived and so this is a coronation um, to the expected king um, which the people recognized to be Jesus through the prophecy um, through the cult that Jesus commanded um, the disciples to go and fetch for him. We thank him for his word. Okay, so now we'll continue um, to walk through chapter 11. Bear with me one moment, everybody, as we get back there. And so we see in verse 11, um, that Jesus goes to Jerusalem on this colt um, and enters into the temple at even time and stays there until the evening goes back to Bethany. So let's read that. It says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the even time was come, and he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. So Jesus comes in and gives an inspection of the temple. He takes a broad look at all of the things, the, the furnishings of the temple, uh, probably the altar, the um, place where they gave sacrifices, um, all of the basins, the inner court, the outer court, um, the places where um, they had the dividing of the different sections of the temple. 
and that's all he did in verse 11 and the Bible says he came out and went with the 12 this is interesting because he goes to the temple multiple times during this short period all right verse 12 through 15 we move on in the steps of Jesus um, deals with Jesus going back to Jerusalem the next day and while they are on their way to Jerusalem he sees a fig tree and curses the fig tree since this is a timeline of the events leading to the crucifixion we're not going to go into any details about the fig tree and what Jesus did to it but we are going to simply note um, that he cursed the fig tree and the fig tree dried up even to the roots the Bible says um, so let's look at what the scripture says um, concerning that verse number 12 and now on the morrow when they were come from Bethany he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves he came if haply he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing but the leaves for the time of figs was not yet and Jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples heard it okay, now Jesus arrives in Jerusalem once again and goes into the temple for the second time all right so verse 6 through 18 deals with this second event in which Jesus goes to the temple and this time he finds the money changers and um, those who um, you know they exchange different currencies on behalf of the temple so that the people um, could buy turtle doves and the other sacrificial animals um, that they routinely sacrificed at the temple all right so let's read 16 through 18 in our hearing all right actually 15 and it says and they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple glory to God and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple and he taught saying unto them it is not written my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer rather let me read that again correctly verse 17 once again and he taught saying unto them is it not written my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves let's stop right here and break this event down a little bit because there are a couple significant things here that we often miss um, we're well aware of Jesus coming in and just you know furiously overturning all the merchandise tables and um, you've seen these markets in the cities and different events um, where people sell merchandise on tables or booths or kiosks and um, Jesus came in outraged at this and overthrew um, all of the money changers those who sold the sacrifices and such and he teaches out of the Old Testament says is it not written my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves you know they had set up a system um, in which they were becoming wealthy um, due to um, people wanting to buy sacrificial animals to sacrifice to God and 
they were extortioners. Um, they um, were um, thieves. He calls it a den of thieves. All right, so that's the second time Jesus comes to the temple. And verse number 18, And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. So this is the second time that Jesus goes into Jerusalem, comes back out after leaving the temple. The first time he inspects it. The second time he comes in and regulates the temple. All right. Jesus was not a priest as far as the priestly line of Aaron and was concerned. Uh, Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Amen. And but he came into the, the temple as one who had authority in the temple. So now eventually they're going to want to know why he did the things he did and by what authority. But in the scripture we just got done reading, this set off a chain of events in which the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, all of the religious leaders in the temple, they sought some way to destroy Jesus without doing it openly because the people were astonished at his doctrine. Not just his miracles, but his doctrine. What Jesus said. Amen. Okay, so in verse 19, he leaves to come back to Jerusalem. Now we'll skip to 20 through 26, where he goes back for a third time. Amen. And we'll note some things in that. So let's go to verse number 20. The Bible says, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And then from there, Jesus goes into an exposition speaking about faith in God and how it relates um, to this event and um, the fact that they would be able to speak to things too and they would obey the voices of the disciples. All right, so we'll skip down for the sake of time to verse number 27. And verse 27, he goes into the temple a third time. It says, and they come again to Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and say unto him, By what authority dost thou these things? The things that they were referring to probably was the second trip into the temple, which he overturned the tables, and he rebuked them and called them thieves. That is the event that they assuredly were talking about. All right, so they want to know by whose authority Jesus answered and said unto them I will ask also of you one question and answer me and I will tell you by what authority I do these things the baptism of John was it from heaven or of men answer me and they reasoned with themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say, why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, we cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. And that is the end of chapter 11. So let me summarize. In this opening chapter of the events 
and which will lead to Jesus Christ being crucified we see that it opens up by Jesus giving a commandment to his disciples um, that um, they need to go into the city and find a cult and when they come back with the cult the people adorn the cult with their garments and begin a coronation from Bethany to Jerusalem which is probably only a couple miles away and when Jesus arrives to Jerusalem the first time um, he goes into the temple and simply observes and inspects the temple um, he stays there for some portion of time then he comes out amen they go in the next day amen they come back to Jerusalem Jesus enters the temple again but on the way to entering the temple um, they actually when actually let me take that back he goes into the temple amen and as he's on the way to the temple he curses the fig tree all right so there's a fig tree on the way in which he wants some fruit and it bare no fruit so Jesus cursed it um, to give the disciples an example um, of what will happen if something is unfruitful in the kingdom all right so he goes back and he overthrows the tables of merchandise in a furious rage there's another account of this in which he made a whip and started whipping the people um, you know this is the only instance where we see in the Gospels where Jesus got violent oh glory to God he overthrew in an outrage um, and it was a righteous indignation um, based on the fact that these money changers and these people who were selling doves were extortioners and they did not have the temple in interest at all so we go from there and fast forward he leaves out of Jerusalem again the next day he comes back and when he enters the temple the religious leaders they question his authority and by what authority do you have to do these things which we understand to be him regulating the temple um, the day before and we end with a discussion between the temple leaders and Jesus concerning his authority and he doesn't answer their question because um, they aren't able to answer his and the question was by where by by who does the baptism of John come from is it from heaven or is it from men and because they didn't really care about the answer um, they were more concerned about what the people would think they didn't answer the question so Jesus withheld the question about by which authority that he did these things so we'll end on that note in our devotion tomorrow we will continue um, we will cover the events in chapter number 12 of Mark and we look forward to continuing this devotion throughout the week and may the Lord richly bless you um, to look in the Word of God see what it says about the things that we celebrate you know this resurrection week um, this passion week it means different things to, to different people it, it is a holiday which is celebrated um, by many of the nations of the world the Christianized nations of the world um, but uh, many miss the true meaning of what Jesus really did and um, it is sometimes reduced um, to a cultural event um, our celebrating Resurrection Sunday or as it is commonly known in our society as Easter um, so our hope and our prayer is that you will dedicate some time um, to thinking about uh, what Jesus really did and how it applies to you and if it wasn't for um, this sacrifice 
um, that he would make at Calvary, um, then we all would be dead in our sins and not even have a chance at salvation. It's not by our works, but it's by the work of Jesus. And it is humbling um, to think that he would pay the price um, that we should have paid. It should have been us on the cross. But yet even our blood would not have saved us. It is the blood of Jesus which set all humanity free. But in order to partake of his sacrifice, we have to believe in faith that Jesus is indeed our Savior and that through his blood um, we are given access to eternal life. And it's not as simple as believing that he did it. The gospel ultimately leads us to some action. And that action is by faith repenting for our sins before God so that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ can be applied to us and all of the other steps of salvation can take place in us and through us through the workings of God's Spirit. All right, so God bless you. This is day one of Holy Week, Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute. We are a ministry of Refuge Temple Church in Burlington, North Carolina. Please share this and join us tomorrow night once again around 7 p.m. All right. God bless you. Good night.